Dennis has been building a digital publishing business over the last five years. In one case, he's taken a magazine from 15,000 a year to 500,000, you know, completely with a virtual team. So I brought him on because this is exactly where the world is heading. And we hear more and more people are looking to outsource their operations to bring on virtual teams. So I really appreciate you taking your time today, Dennis. Happy to be here, man. So the biggest question to really kick it off is, you know, how do you hire well when you can really only go by you know, online reviews when bringing on a virtual team? Yeah, so I mean, a lot of people have a misconception that there's either you're going offshore to India or Philippines or someplace like that, or you're bringing people in-house, where virtualization just means they're not where you are. So the hiring practice is essentially the same, no matter whether they're virtual or in-house. Interesting. Yeah, so let's say we're taking two different scenarios here. So let's say you're doing a high level task in the US. So this may be some of your hire for marketing, like a okay. virtual consultant. Mm -hmm. So you go through the same process as you would if a consultant came up to you at a networking event and said, hey, I want to work for you. I want to help you grow your business. You vet them, you ask for references, you mm -hmm. see examples of their work, or you ask friends to refer people to you. Same concept, no okay. difference. If you're going overseas, that can be a little trickier because here you're typically outsourcing more rudimentary jobs. So maybe somebody posting on Facebook every day or responding to your emails or something like that. The best way to do it, reviews count for something. Like if you're going through a reputable site like Upwork or Elance or any of those types of websites, if you're going through those, the reviews matter because if somebody does a shitty job, somebody's gonna write about it. And the more jobs they have, the more likely that person performs. Okay. So that's definitely a good benchmark. At that point though, the easiest way to find out if they work is to just create a simple test that reflects the job that you want done. Okay. So if you want somebody to say, respond to your emails or handle customer support, mm -hmm. send them examples of some emails that might come in and have them respond to it and see what they do. Hmm. So that's a good way to test competency, reliability, and all those types of things. You'll just learn as you work with them. Right. And just like you hire somebody in-house, it's not gonna be a 100% success ratio. Some people are gonna fizzle out who seem great. Some people who seem mediocre would be all-stars. Same concept. Well, that's an interesting segue, because what are the benefits of really having that outsourced team as opposed to you know hiring everybody locally you know, in the office? Yeah, I mean, so there are pros and cons to uh, both. And it really just depends on what you're looking for. If you want the freedom and flexibility to work from home, to travel while you're working, mm -hmm. anything like that, virtual teams lend themselves well to it. If you are the type of person who wants everybody around you so you can just have impromptu soundboarding ideas and build some type of culture, then you might want it in-house. Okay. So it really just depends on what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, based on where you live, from there's taxes, tax benefits. I mean, they'll all essentially be 1099 for the most part. That's interesting. Um, overseas, you have you can save on labor mm -hmm. to a certain extent. So there, it just depends on what you're looking for, what stages you are in the business. I've been doing this for roughly five years, and I've kind of, I've done the outsourcing across the gambit. Most of my team now is virtual. Well, all my team is virtual. Most of them are in the U.S. now. I've shifted away from a lot of the overseas stuff. Okay. Well, the biggest fear I think that people have is when it comes to bringing on an outsourced team or a couple outsourced team members to really help with a heavy lifting task. You know, how do you track and manage that kind of a teammate when you can't see him on an everyday basis and you know speak to him all the time? Honestly, and it's seems to be the recurring theme in this conversation is really no different than having somebody in your office because a good manager doesn't track their team's productivity by hovering over them inside the office and mm. seeing what you're doing. like that just makes people feel like you don't trust them and you're lingering and probably de degrades performance over time mm -hmm. so you're going to do the exact same thing you do with anything else where you're going to set benchmarks for that person to hit you have to know 
when you're hiring somebody into your business, what success looks like in that role. It needs to be clearly defined, needs to be clearly outlined, and needs to be given to that person. So if somebody, let's take something to see easy to understand like Facebook, mm -hmm. hiring somebody to post content about your product on Facebook. You need to know what success looks like. Is that bringing in a hundred clicks to your website from people clicking on from social posts? Is that growing the Facebook page by a hundred likes a day? Like you have to decide what success looks like. And then once that's clear, you give that benchmark to that person. And then you can see very clearly, are they passing or failing? Cause this is a pass fail situation. Okay. And you know, the, question that we got from one of our members is really right along that line I think we're kind of touching on a vein that you know if you can't see that person face to face you know how do you build that relationship that makes them part of the team and I think you spoke about it earlier with you know creating that culture it's a lot harder with a virtual team than it is you know sitting around a table singing kumbaya so you know what ways have you discovered because I I know, I've seen you with your team. I mean, you're a phenomenal manager. How do you how do you build that relationship so that they go above and beyond and don't just do the minimal task? Yeah. So let me preface this by saying most companies nowadays, virtual or in person, don't have a culture. Hmm. Anyways, so if that's your main fear, chances are statistics weren't in your favor that you. <laughs> so let's just be honest there. But moving into more proactive situation. It's once again the same thing as hiring internally or externally because you're hiring people who are aligned with the company, who are aligned with your mission and want to be a part of the company. Okay. If somebody wants to be a part of what you're doing, it doesn't matter if they're five feet away from you or 5,000 feet away from you. They're going to interact, they're going to engage. On the more tactical side, you do have to have a communication channel. Mm -hmm. We use Slack. Um, you can also use Skype. We use that for a couple of years. And through that, you can check in people, have conversations, have a daily team call. We do a weekly one, we used to do dailies, but a daily team call for new companies that are moving very fast, where you're talking and you're going through objections, blockages, mm -hmm. how people are feeling. And then once a month is what we do. I do a monthly check-in with my team, where it's a one-on-one, -on -one. I'm like, hey, how are things going? How are you feeling about the company? Okay. Do you like where we're going, et cetera. So all things that I would do if I had everybody in my office, no different. That's interesting. You know, and one of those things I want to touch on is really the communication aspect because you know, communicating openly with an outsourced team can be a challenge, but you mentioned Slack. What about Slack do you like? What don't you like? You know, where's the gap there between the face-to-face -face and uh, the virtual? So the gap I feel that I have yet to quite figure out how to overcome, I'm looking to tackle that this year actually, is there is still a certain magic that happens, a serendipitous moment that occurs when people are all together in a room and just casually talking. Right. It still happens virtually with through team chit chat, and throwing out ideas and stuff like that. That will still happen, but there's that magic that happens call it metaphysical energy whatever you want and what I would recommend if you have a US based virtual team like I have mm -hmm. is I'm gonna I'm working on doing our first in person okay meeting. I'm gonna fly everybody in together once a year and we're all gonna connect that way if it works really well I might do it more often if it turns out this was the same <laughs> as if we were just talking virtually then it may not be needed okay but in terms of that that's the only real gap that I've found. Uh, everything else will happen if you have the right people who are engaged and interested in the business and you yourself are an effective communicator because the buck stops on us as owners. Right. So we have to go the extra mile to actually give a shit about our people. Yeah. And I think you, you touched on something earlier that really made a lot of sense when you said you know, that they need to be passionate about the subject. And you know that goes back to the old adage where you know if you like what you do, you know you don't work a day in your life. But you, you, we really don't think about that when it comes to hiring. You know, if they like the job, you know they're not going to think about it as a job. So I think that you kind of hit the nail on the head there. Yeah, and Joel, I'll tell you, like I will never 
ever, ever, ever again hire somebody who does not, who isn't passionate about what my business does. My entire team, I'm in the crochet space. So my entire team are passionate crocheters. They want to make a lifelong career out of crochet. Right. There's probably not a month that goes by, I would say, where somebody on the team doesn't say that, wow, I'm so happy to be able to come here. Like it's a dream to be able to make crochet a career. Right. And right. with that passion, like I don't worry about a lot of things that other business owners will worry about. There's no disengagement that happens. There's no fear of them jumping ship. Mm -hmm. I mean, to some extent I'm training badass people. So other companies might try to come poach for me, but that goes back to if you treat your people well, you pay them well, you align them with the business, you don't have to worry about that anyways. Cool. But one thing is, you know, I know that you've worked with people overseas. You know, how do you keep a project on the same timeline when people are on different hours? You know, when you're working with Russia or China, or the Philippines, something like that. Yeah, that can be incredibly difficult. I would say the further away they are, in term, from a time zone standpoint, mm -hmm. the more frequent you have to communicate. The more clearly a project needs to be outlined the clearer the de liberal deliverables need to be and the clearer the due dates are. So if you have all that aligned where a person knows where if they're on track or, or not and you're meeting regularly, mm -hmm. you sidestep a lot of those issues. But chances are there are going to be days where there's going to be a small thing that could have been communicated earlier but they're already gone for a day and you might lose a day. But you're also paying like half the amount you're gonna be paying anyway. So what the hell is that day in the grand scheme? Interesting, because you know, one thing that people are most concerned about, and this was one of our member questions, is you know, how can you trust uh, an outsourced team that you hire online uh, that they won't take your idea or take something from your business model and you know start their own thing? Because the biggest concern whenever you're coming up with you. Know, a brand new concept or something innovative is that somebody's going to come to market faster than you and you don't want somebody that you hire to be the one that takes it out from under you. For sure. So let me answer that question by asking you a question, Joel. Have you ever come across a business owner who's had their ideas stolen by an employee before? Yeah, all the time. Were they virtual? No. It fucking happens. <laughs> like, at, at the end of the day, it, it, you can't avoid it. It's gonna happen. Um, but my personal opinion on that is, if your business is so cookie cutter, so easy to replicate, there's no magic, there's no secret sauce in it whatsoever, mm. somebody's gonna rip you off anyways. Whether it's your employee, or a customer, or just somebody who you're randomly talking to. Like, if that's your job, that's the nature of business. You have to create something that's special to really survive. That's an interesting perspective. I think a lot of people get caught up in the fear of you know, the unknown and use that as an excuse not to take the risk into jumping into this kind of an uncharted water that you know, is so new for some people. But you know, if somebody wanted to you know, dip a toe in, how can they find uh, outsourced labor that they trust? That's like somebody who just got off of a breakup asking how they can find somebody who won't cheat on them. <laughs> I mean, chances are, if you're going through a reputable site, let's say Upwork, that's what we use. Mm -hmm. If you're going through a reputable site and you find somebody who has a lot of reviews, then chances are you're fine. You're not going to run into any issues. If that person was the type of person to do that, they would have done it by then. Mm -hmm. and you're, should you have something prepared ahead of time to really get the most out of that you know, initial conversation or relationship? Yeah, it just goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Have the position clearly outlined, have the responsibilities, have the performance indicators, have the benchmarks, have all that lined up, have a test prepared to judge if that person is gonna be competent at that role. And then at a certain point, you just roll the dice. You can mitigate some of the risk by starting off with a very nominal task. Like something that is not going to make or break your business if something right. was to go wrong with that. So if you want to dip your toes in, pick 
the thing you hate doing most in your business. That's a small, minuscule thing, but you really dread doing it and go hire somebody to do it. Then you'll get addicted and you won't feel <laughs> And then live, live your lifestyle and travel around the globe. I got it. But <laughs> what is the best thing that you know somebody can do to really prepare their business for success coming up? You know, two thousand eighteen. Find the biggest leverage points in your business. Okay. So there are really only three ways to grow a business: it's front end sales, getting buy through the door, initial purchases some version of retention, which is the frequency of how often somebody purchases. So how many times they reorder, how many times they come back to the business, whatever, some element of them returning. And then your back-end sales, which is how much they buy from you overall, mm -hmm. which is essentially upsells is really what we're talking about. So if they buy a toothbrush from you, are they also buying toothpaste okay. to go with? Right. So within those three categories, when you hear that, chances are something will come to mind where you're dropping the ball at. For new businesses, it's always front end sales because most people don't spend enough time figuring out how to generate the level of sales they need to sustain the business. So once you have that in place and you know what area you need to work on, create a master list of all the ideas you have on how to improve that. Mm -hmm. So let's. I run a chiropractic business and I want to work on, I have plenty of bodies coming through the door. Our customers love us and they keep coming back. They're on a monthly plan where they come back every month mm -hmm. and get investments. But I, my bottom line isn't where I want to be because we're just spending so much on marketing to get bodies in the door. So I decide I'm going to work on my back end sales. So I have a list of ideas of all the things I can offer my clients. I go in and I rank those based on the ones I think are gonna be the most effective and easiest to implement and the ones I have most confidence in. It's a, a scrum score. It's, the metaphor is actually ice. Imp impact, confidence, ease. So you rank it on a one to 10 scale between those. You rank each idea and then whatever comes ranks the highest the aggregate of the three scores, where it ranks the highest, that's the project you work on first. Okay. And if you do that and repeat it over and over and over, you will build out each leg of your business faster than somebody who is just doing a typical way of, oh, I wanna make a couple extra grand a month. Here are a bunch of ideas. I'm gonna treat all of them equal. I'm gonna spread myself thin and get absolutely nothing done. Okay. I mean, I, I feel like you just summarized every single you know productivity book in about three to four minutes there but it, you know that's phenomenal and i think what we'll, what we'll do on the back end is we'll make sure that everybody has a worksheet on this and i know that you wrote a book uh, a couple of years ago now but that went huge on amazon about making uh, the most out of your mornings what was the name of that I have no idea. <laughs> it was so long ago. You've been too busy lately. I'll, yeah. I'll find that. I'll make sure it's in the uh, description below. But you know, I think that that's phenomenal advice. And if you could leave somebody with one pointer about you know, taking their business and outsourcing it, what would that be? Give it a try. Find the thing that you hate to do the most. Block out one day out of your life and go try and outsource it. Awesome. Worst case scenario, it doesn't work and you have to keep doing it. I can appreciate that. Well, I appreciate your time too. So thank you so much for sharing your insight with us and uh, I appreciate you joining us. You too, man. Have a great day. Bye-bye.